In today's playtest and performance review of the Yonex Eclipsian 3, we're going to ask the question, are they worth your money? Let's find out. Hey everybody, it's Zach. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight for another playtest and performance review. This particular shoe actually took me a little while longer to playtest than some others, and I'll get to that reason why in a little bit. However, I don't want to waste any time, so let's get straight to our infrared test, our suicide test, <gasps> serve test and of course play test of the yawn x eclipse in three here we go and heads up if you're new to the channel of course we're going to be cutting these in half in about a week or so to check out how the mechanics of this shoe compare with their on-court performance so if you want to be notified of those videos click the subscribe button and the bell so now for our play test i actually had to hold off on this play test for a little while because i had to wear these shoes around a bit before i felt comfortable enough in them to actually play an hour of tennis in them they specifically irritated me around my fifth metatarsal head, which is located right here. They also gave me a tad bit of cramping around my first metatarsal head, which is located right here. That's right around the ball of your foot, and that's where you'd expect a pair of narrow shoes to irritate somebody with a medium wide to really wide foot. Now, after two days, they did break in. However, I've played with these about six or seven times now, and I can tell you, I still notice those two areas. On the inside of the shoe, you notice it where the tread comes up on the outer, and on the outside of the shoe, you notice it right along the lateral flange. So even though with my 2E width foot, I was able to break them in over about two days, I still wouldn't recommend these for people with a very wide foot. If you have a narrow to medium width foot, they'll break in just fine for you. But if you are on the wider side of the spectrum, look for something else. Now these shoes are light enough for me to consider these a speed shoe at about 14.9 ounces for a size 10 and a half shoe. They also have this graphite shank that Yonex claims in the midsole of the shoe. Of course we're going to check that out when we tear them down and cut them in half, but Yonex does have on their site that this is a graphite shank and that does decrease the weight of the shoe as well. The midsole does feel kind of like a dense sponge, which I did like. However, I did not feel any real bounce coming from the shoe. I didn't feel like I was getting a lot of feedback with my movement. The midsole to me just felt like it was made for more comfort and not bounce. Even though Yonex does tout these power cushions in the midsole uh, as well as in the heel and forefoot. However, let's test it with the serve test. I got 27 centimeters of height on the serve test with these, similar to the Vapor Cage 4s, which is ironic because playing in them, I felt their best value proposition is, if you like the Vapor Cage 4s padding but don't like their sluggishness, the Eclipsian 3s are a great alternative. Looking at the outsole tread, it's a hybrid herringbone with a large terraced gap showing that graphite plate and extra cushion. Large terrace gap I was talking about does make the shoe a little lighter. It also allows for some air exchange because you also see a little bit of a gap in the tread from the inside and outside of the shoe that will allow a little bit of sliding. The inside of the shoe, the medial side of the tread does ride up on the outsole, which I was talking about, as well as over the toe box. And on the inside, the medial side of the tread, it's a very dense herringbone pattern. That's gonna give you a good grip on hard court. Now on the outside or lateral side of the shoe, you have a much chunkier herringbone pattern that's gonna grip clay, even really hard and dry clay, which I noticed playing on some drier clay courts, they really did grip well on that clay. So we've just talked about a lot of the speed features of this shoe. It also has a lot of durability features, mainly the entire upper of polyurethane material. That's gonna protect against sliding as well as wear. It also has that outsole that rides up over the toe box, which is a key important feature of any shoe. So let's see how the speed and the durability come together with the suicide test. I came in at 14.66 seconds in the Eclipsian 3s, and this was after I did a suicide test in the GP Turbos where I came in at 14.74 seconds. These were my control shoes for tonight's test. Now this surprised me because I didn't expect these to perform as well as they did, right on par with the fastest shoes I've tried this year to date. Looking a little closer at the upper materials of the shoe, like I just said, we do have the polyurethane upper. We also have a really padded tongue. This was really nice to play in, very plush, comfortable. Uh, the heel counter has an outer 
hard shell heel counter plastic material that I really liked. I felt like I did get a lot of rigidity moving side to side and I really liked that in a tennis shoe because if you're playing on a hard court and you're trying to cut back and forth, having this really hard heel counter on these shoes, especially externally, I really liked. And speaking of the midsole, I really enjoyed how these have this terrace midsole here. You see the terracing down here, but it's also on the inside of the shoe and on the outside of the shoe. I do feel like if this shoe does give you any bounce whatsoever, it comes from that midsole. And I think that graphite shank kind of combining together, and that's what makes this shoe give any bit of bounce. Like I said, it did feel more of just like a light speed shoe to me because it is pretty thin in the middle here. However, any bounce and any responsiveness I was getting when kind of tracking down a drop shot came, I think, from this terracing of the midsole and that power cushion, uh, what Yonex was talking about. Now it is summer here in Pittsburgh and on court, it's about 91 to 95 degrees every time we're playing right now. It's getting pretty hot. Oh, I'm so fat. And these shoes, if you look online, say they do have a lot of weaving in them for air exchange, for heat exchange. Well, I want to start testing that in shoes. So I got myself an infrared gun to check out the temperature and how much these shoes heat up while you play. So let's check the Eclipsian 3s with the infrared test and see if that polyurethane upper really does breathe. On court temperature was 96.2, pre match temperature in the shoe was 89.9, and post was 99.0, so just a nine degree increase. So there are a few things to think about with a shoe when determining how much it heats up on court during the hot summer months. Number one is breathability, yes, but number two is the albedo of the shoe. Albedo means how much of light is reflected off of the surface. So the lighter color of the shoe, the more it's gonna reflect. So if you have one shoe in a darker color and another in a lighter color, if it's the same shoe, the lighter colored shoe is always gonna stay a little bit cooler. Same with your socks. You wear dark socks or light socks, the same sock, the lighter ones are gonna bounce more heat off of it. So that's something you wanna think about when picking out shoes. So I think the best players for this shoe are people that play a lot on hard and clay courts. They did perform really well on both surfaces, even though they do have that hybrid pattern. I thought I was gonna get some sliding on clay courts on the inside of the shoe, and I didn't. These gripped really well, even on the drier clay. Next, I think a player that has a narrow to medium foot will like this shoe. If it's really wide, like I said, go somewhere else. The next bit is if you like a really padded tongue, if you like that feeling, like that more plush tongue, you're gonna like these shoes a lot. Next, if you want a stiff heel counter, these are definitely a great shoe for you because not only is it a hard shell, but it's a thick shell in the back, so you will get some nice cutting back and forth. So let me throw it back to you. Would you consider a pair of Yonex Eclipsian 3s or do you think that the price point, which is right now around $140 and they MSRP for a little bit more than that, would you consider this or consider going with another brand? Let me know in the comments down below. So I hope you all enjoyed the drone footage in this episode. If you have any ideas on how to better use that drone, leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Otherwise, hope you all have a great day, great night, wherever you're tuning in from. I'll see you next time.